Hey everybody, Mr. Kevin here, and welcome to the Curve Cabots of Bimbo. <laughs> So what you're seeing here are all the curved parts for the curved cabinets of Bimbo. There are four cabinets in total. One is just a very tall storage cabinet um, with lots of crown molding on it and stuff and fancy legs and raised panels and things like that. And it's kind of nice, but these are all the curved parts. And there's three cabinets that we have to build that are uh, have curves in them. So here are all the parts. So there's three jigs here that are used to glue up all the parts. So the bigger one is for the... Uh, Actually, the guest bathroom, which has a, a complete curve, the whole thing is curved. The second one up here is for the uh, master bathroom parts. And this one here that's right in front of me is also for the guest bathroom. So this jig here is just for the door, curved door raised panels, and the door rails, which are right here. All the rest of the stuff you see down here and down there are all for the uh, master bathroom. Uh, two vanities, which are identical. Yeah, there you go. This is about three weeks worth of work. So there's over 150 pieces that have been resawed, uh, drum sanded, and glued back together on the jigs in this pile. There's a couple of raised panel molding parts that are down there. I still have to make more, haven't done that yet. That's just on the bandsaw. And uh, yeah, it's a pile of work. So we're gonna go over how we go about joining these pieces. How we rip curved pieces on the table saw because these all have to be ripped down to the right sizes. I think these are two and a half. These will be two, and these have to be ripped down. Everything here has to be joined and ripped down. And I'll show you how I go about doing that on the table saw uh, safely. And then we have to cross cut these also. And I'll show, I have to make a jig for that, how we go about cross cutting them. And we're also going to make jigs for the uh, raised panel molding. Once we shape this, uh, it'll look like raised panel molding. And then we have to actually miter this and put that on these parts here. So we got a lot of work to do. This all has to be done in 10 weeks because uh, in 10 weeks from now I start another project which is uh, more curved stuff uh, right here in the town where I live. All right, let's get to it. The first thing we're gonna do after I uh, get rid of all this stuff and put it away, how I go about laying out the parts and make sure I got the right links and all that and how we go about uh, joining, milling and ripping these down on the table saw, which is kind of fun sometimes. So uh, yeah, stay tuned, here we go, all right. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> so I have this plan here, right? I need to figure out all the dimensions here across the radius. This is the curve radius jig that I'm gonna make all the parts with. And I've laid it out so it's 34 and a quarter from here to the end down there, because that's where the walls, corner of the wall is way over here. And it comes out, boom, and it goes across that way. And it has to be out so far for the sink and all that to fit and all that other neat stuff. We have the styles right here. Okay, this is the width of the style. And what I need to do to figure out this angle is put this basically on the jig and set it right there. Oh my and then mark the bottom of the hunk of wood, which I did right here, which comes out to be 22 degrees. And these are very handy dandy. They're a little overpriced, but uh, they work. So when I go to make these styles on the side, I have to cut this at 22 degrees so it'll be flush with the wall because the wall goes this way. The other thing I needed to figure out was uh, the measurement from one end to the other of the radius so I could figure out all my parts on how wide all these parts are going to be. So I, I'm going to make all the parts long and a little wide so I can cut them down, but I need these pretty close to what it's going to be in real life. And then to figure out that measurement, you could either, you know, you can pull your tape and bend it across. Uh, but what I like to do, sorry, you know, I'm just going to take a hunk of quarter inch and basically uh, clamp it down, mark it, and then cut it, and then measure it that way. Oh, and it'll be just like this. Geez, I'm just going to mark underneath. Or you can mark it the face right here. Boom. And then you just release. Release it! Release the hounds! And then what I'll do is I'll just uh, measure from there to there. I'm just going to cut it on the chop saw, boom, and I'll know my length. And if it doesn't make any sense, just uh, rewind and uh, get confused again. All right, so we got the jig. I'm going to get rid of the jig. Uh, so we have a mark here. And we have a mark there. And we just cut it on the chop saw. Here, I'll just do that real quick. All right, now we have our piece. Okay, right there. I don't know if you can see that. We'll just go with 49 and 7 eighths. 
So that's what we have across this radius of the face frame. And now we're gonna lay out all our other stuff because we got corbels and things to put on. Like this corbel goes on here. Ooh. We got this here, right? This is gonna get the cut on the little bottom. I'm gonna go here like that, boom. This is gonna be attached to there. Then we have a panel, and then we have another mulling that goes in here, and then we got the two doors, and boom, that's how it goes. So I put the corbel marks on this side here, which are six and five eighths, and they're on the other side over here, same thing, six and five eighths, and divide it right down the middle, right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out the length, and I already know what it is, they're 18 and an eighth, but I'm gonna show you how I did it using this silly thing right here. And the way I do that is I actually just take this and I bend it. This is very bendable. I put it that on that end right there. And I pull it over here. And I just bend it until it's relaxed and on that line. I don't know if you can see that or not. So I'm just bending it. Okay. And you can bend it too much and get on the wrong line. So you have to really make sure you got on that line there. And then let it relax until you get it right on the line. And that's 36 and an eighth. So the next thing we're going to do right here is going to lay out the, uh, the styles. And then I'll know what my rails need to be, and then I'll be able to write on my cut list, all right, two and a half by bleh, however long. And I'm going to make everything long by a couple inches so I can cut it to fit, because this, when you're making doors, is going to have to be, you know, perfect. So I got it all laid out. I put the two-inch styles in here. Ooh. Over there and over there. They're all laid out. It's on the both sides, and same thing. I did the exact same thing with this. I set it up on there, and I took this, and I bent it over. Oh, I got that so. Now we have everything we need. I'm gonna finish my cut list, but it's 2.30 and I'm gonna go have lunch. All right, we're laying out the uh, curved parts. And we made ourselves a little tiny jig out of MDF. And the front part of the jig and the back part. So this jig right here is for the raised panel molding. The raised panel part is in the middle and the square little sticks up like a raised panel. Okay, so see this little thing right here? All right, since it's curved, we have to make this part here. And this is what I'm, oh, good golly, you can't even see it. Okay, so that little part right there is what I'm calling the raised panel molding. Ooh. This part right here is going to be separate. Ah. So I'm going to make a little panel that's curved, three quarters of an inch thick. This stuff here is going to be five eighths, all right, by inch and three eighths. This is the curve of the front of the door, and this is the curve for the back of the door. It's three quarters of an inch thick. Just like this line shows what we're doing this is like a tracing jig we also can use this as a flush trim jig later on set it on here we're going to trace it out i have a three quarter inch line there take that line and you line it up with the front line oh good golly and you don't drop it okay you do the one on this side you line the front up with that trace the back okay and you continue to do the same thing you put one in the front Leave yourself a little space for bands on and all that. Boom. And then you push it forward and you mark the back. Using this line here to line up, you know, the next line. And this is just for a bandsaw. So that's, and a lot of people, a lot of people say, why don't you just cut out a piece and blah, blah, blah. Well, you could do that. And then, but even with MDF, sometimes it starts moving. So you'll get a not true uh, radius. It'll like, you cut it and it kind of like, eh, move. It'll get hot and cold and it'll change. So with a board like this, it'll stay that radius. And then later on, like I said, if you want to uh, flush trim the front, you can do that. And flush trim the back, whatever. So you can do all that uh, after the fact. The piece that we need is only this big. So between the two styles. Here's the two styles right here. Okay, the piece we need is in here. Okay. So this piece is really long, longer than we need. But that's okay, because we're going to cut it off before we flush trim it. And uh, yeah, we can use this to flush trim with. And usually what I do after I've done all that, you flush trim the front off and the back's still fat. This will be the back and we'll just set this up on the flush trim router. Uh, I'm going to put blocks back here. Like, uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take little blocks like this and I'm going to put them back here. Boom. And we'll just uh, have them all over the place. Boop, boop, boop. Probably hot glue them down or whatever. Just tack them with a couple pins. That way I have a stop to back into. And then when we flush the back off, the front will be nice and smooth and it'll be the same thickness every single time because we're just buttoning it into the piece of wood that goes all the way across. And then once you get done with that, then you have to shape the damn thing. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of complicated. There's a lot of parts. 
there's a lot of things going on. I actually have to make a jig so we can actually, uh, I don't know if I'm going to do it by hand or I'm just going to uh, make a jig that'll fit in there and we'll just uh, route it that way. We'll, we'll figure that out. That's not a big deal. Routing a race panel cutter. Yeah, not a big deal. So for this little guy right here, what we're making is the molding right there, uh, the panel molding. So we're making just this piece here. So I got all five of them drawn out here. Uh, I got one extra in case I blow it up, uh, which happens. So it's always good to make one or two extra just, uh, you know, just to practice, one to practice with and four to do right. All right. These are the styles right here. This is going to be the rail. And inside that rail, which is, uh, we go like this. Uh, so this is like 14 and a quarter, and we need another half inch on top of that. So overall, the whole thing's going to be like 14 and three quarters. Yeah, so it's kind of a big curved race panel. Well, I'm going to get back to it, and I just wanted to film this part. And I'm sure I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to edit the crap out of this because I know that made sense to me. <laughs> okay. Well, it's all dark and nasty. It is six o'clock at night and it's time to go. Uh, yeah. So day one, we got all our cutlass made. We've got uh, the toe kick figured out for the radius, little tiny itty bitty thing. We got all the all the radiuses and all the corbels figured out. Got all the dimensions that I need. I have a cut list for everything I need. And tomorrow we're gonna chop all that pile of wood up into manageable little pieces because we don't need to mill a 12 foot long board. We're gonna do a lot of resawing, which is boring as hell. So I won't make you all, I'll show you one little thing of resawing and a couple tricks I do. And then we'll go over how to uh, glue up everything, the jigs, how to make the jigs. Then the fun begins. So we have to cut curved parts on the table saw, join curved parts on the joiner, uh, sand them what we need and then chop them to fit and then Domino the ends, because we're going to use that domino machine I just bought. Domino the ends, and uh, yeah, then we'll go from there. <laughs> All right, peoples, we'll see you soon. You have an awesome day. Go outside and play. Hug somebody you love, and I'll see you next time, and uh, right here on the YouTube, and on Woodworker with Mr. Kevin. Now i got to find the magic button. Oh, here it is. Magic button. Sorry I'm so dark, but that's just the way it is. Gorilla filming. All right. Bye. <laughs> It didn't work. <laughs> Gotta be smarter than the wood sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. How do I do that so I can show everybody? For God's sakes. Uh, how do I show this? Because it won't be on there. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm going to flip this around like this, just in case I blow it up. Oh, God, lunch. Blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of stuff to pay attention to, so I'm going to have to start drinking coffee again so I uh, be awake through all this. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. All right. I hope you find this interesting because, uh, I don't know. Watch, only three people will watch this and be like, oh, that's dumb. Huh. Who does curve work anymore? <laughs> uh, I do. Oh.